division and molding, called the makeup stage. Quand la division de la pâte est venue, when dividing the dough, the most important thing to remember is to avoid any rough handling of the dough. Put a thin sprinkling of flour where you are going to cut the dough to keep it from sticking to your hands and work surface. It is very important at this stage not to abuse the dough or overwork it in any fashion. When scaling dough pieces, always incorporate and gently tuck the little leftover piece into the underside of the next piece. This is the baker's little trick. After division, let the dough rest at least 10 minutes to regain its elasticity. Protect the dough pieces from drafts or airflow so that a skin doesn't form, which would hinder its rise and interior development. After the dough has recovered from dividing, one moves on to the molding of the dough pieces. I usually tell my students that the baker must have an iron hand and a velvet glove. It is important to know whether the dough piece needs to be rolled a little tighter or a little looser, depending upon its physical properties. One should not simply lay the hand flat on the dough and push and roll. It is necessary to curl the fingers, cupping the hand around the dough piece, and gently move it back and forth to give it its shaping and to avoid ripping or shearing it. With the advent of mechanical molders, many bakers have forgotten how to do hand molding, or never learned. It was quite challenging to emulate the skill of the professor's experienced hands. The main problem in mechanical molding is that the baker might try to stretch the dough farther and faster by tightening the rollers. This exaggerated lamination tends to ruin the dough by pressing out all of the gas pockets, leaving the inside tight and too homogenous. Hand shaping of the dough pieces usually leads to a more open, pleasing structure. After molding, the pieces are placed in a proof box for rising during the second fermentation. The professor believes that flavor is developed during the first fermentation. The only purpose of the second fermentation is to give the bread proper final texture. In the proof box, the temperature should be about 26 to 27 degrees centigrade, 79 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Le patron doit être protégé. The humidity should be high enough so that the dough surface does not dry out and form a crust, but not so humid that the dough gets sticky and goes flat. When the shaped dough loaves are properly risen, they are almost ready for the final important component of making good bread, baking. One crucial step before the bake is the scoring of the surface of the dough piece. These scoring marks must be very carefully made. They must be very regular, the same size, cut not too deeply into the dough, and slightly angled. The dough piece can be compared to someone in a corset that has to be let loose a little bit. It needs to expand when it goes into the oven. Scoring gives a nice appearance to the exterior, but it also allows the interior to develop properly. Although traditional French breads were once baked directly upon the floor of a brick oven, at the Culinary Institute, the professor used a modern hearth oven with a stone deck surface. According to the professor, the introduction of steam during the first part of the bake does a number of things to the baking dough. The loaves are protected from the shock and intensity of the oven heat. Because the surface is moistened and softened, it allows the dough to expand to its full volume. By causing a slight gelatinization on the surface of the crust, the steam helps give the finished bread a nice shiny texture and light golden color. The heat of the oven sets off an intense burst of fermentation and generates what is called an oven kick. The bottom of the dough springs up a bit from the oven floor and the bread attains its final shape and volume. When the breads come out of the oven, they experience thermal shock and the crust contracts. You can hear little crackling sounds coming from the loaves, almost as if the bread were singing. The big breads can be knocked on the bottom. The sound should be somewhat hollow and resinous. The finished loaf, neither too heavy nor too light, should have a crispy, dark, golden crust and a creamy yellow-white crumb. The flavor should be mildly nutty or wheaty, and the texture should be both tender and chewy.
All in all, the bread should be pleasingly irresistible. By respecting the natural ingredients, mixing with care, paying close attention to the all-important first fermentation, gently dividing and shaping the dough, and baking correctly and sufficiently, the result should be good French bread. If we start with a good primary flour and respect the baking process, we end up with excellent results.